Hello and welcome to PSD Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. Today we are going to start learning about the timeline panel in Photoshop. Why would someone use Photoshop, first of all, to edit videos? Well, video editing with familiar tools for Photoshop users is great. It just really lets you to work like working with images and apply all those things that you know in Photoshop already to videos. Photoshop doesn't want to compete with Premiere or After Effects. It's more like another way of doing your video edits. Photoshop is good for quickly editing videos together and add color correction and effects using non-destructive editing like smart filters, adjustment layers and layer styles. It is also a great way to get into video editing for photographers because most likely uh, you won't have Final Cut or Premiere or After Effects. Even if you have these software, you can still start out in Photoshop and learn the basics of video editing here because the whole workflow is very user friendly. So let me introduce you to this workflow and in this video I'm going to concentrate on adding video audio and text using the timeline panel. Before I go into details, let me show you what can you achieve with video editing in Photoshop. So I'm going to open this video that I exported. Okay, so that was the video that I exported from Photoshop and now we can go back and here you can see all these elements that I use for this editing. So here in the layers panel we can see that we have text, images, videos and I also used adjustment layers and smart objects with smart filters. Plus I also have layer styles applied to the text. So once again, you can see that the main advantage of editing video in Photoshop is that you can use all these familiar tools and ways of editing images for video. If you are good at Photoshop, why not use all the things you know already for working with images for video files? So first of all, how do we start creating a video here in Photoshop? You can start with a blank document, so you can go to File New and then you can choose a preset for film and video. Here you can find a lot of presets. So we can, for example, use the full HD preset and then uh, we can click on OK. So that's how it starts. And whenever you have the timeline panel open and you have an empty or an open document, you can always create a video timeline for that document or a frame animation. Now this is something, the frame animation, that I'm going to talk about in more details in another video. Now we are going to concentrate on the video timeline. So remember, this option is only available when you have an open document. It can be a blank document or it can already have some layers. And to be able to see the timeline panel, you have to go to the window menu and choose timeline. So this is a panel with a quite a lot of options from the panel menu and also a couple of uh, tools or icons here on the panel. All this will become active once we have a video timeline. So once I click on video timeline, we will already have our normal layer, which was converted from a background layer to be able to make some edits on it. And uh, here in the timeline, now we can actually play our video which at the moment is just a blank white screen. So how can we add videos to this composition? There are several ways of doing it, but what I prefer to do is to click on this icon here and choose Add Media. So once I select that, 
we can select the videos we would like to work with so I'm going to select these three videos and I'm going to click on open now as soon as I put them into a Photoshop they will become a video group it's always good to add all the videos into a video group that you would like to edit together because that will keep it organized and you can see it's also organized here in the layers panel they are all in a video group which I can close or open and I can even delete this layer the first uh, white layer I don't need that so I delete it and once I delete it it will ripple delete from the timeline as well which means all these clips will go to the first frame so automatically gets rid of that part from the timeline as well and move the clips to the beginning as you can see we have these three clips here in our timeline and the first one completely fills the full HD uh, size but these two the second one and the third one is not big enough so we can check the size of these the easiest way to check their size is probably by command clicking on the thumbnail here in the layers panel and then we can go to the info panel and check their size instead of checking it in centimeters or millimeters I'm going to change the measurement to pixels so yes I can see that this is the 720 HD standard so we can change our canvas size for that but first of all let me make the first video smaller as well so I'm going to select that go there in the time and press command T but that will warn us that transforming a video layer requires converting it to a smart object layer now that is not a disadvantage at all I'm going to actually use smart objects for these videos so why not convert them now so I'm going to click on convert and now I can actually specify the size of this video file so I am going to change the size and type in 1280 pixels by 720 pixels so that's the size of the other videos and then I can press enter and let's just check the other videos now they are all sharing the same size now if I go to the image menu and choose trim I can get rid of the transparent pixels in my document so I can click on OK and now everything is nicely aligned to the size of the videos I can quickly change the order of the videos by dragging them around so I can decide to have the snowboard video first then the forest and then the video with the mountain bike another useful thing to know about videos is that you can always change their speed now you can only do this if you still have a video layer and not a smart object so like for this video clip I can click on this little play icon and I can change the speed if I want to make it a faster video which I would like to do with this video I can just increase the speed if I want to do the same thing with this clip which I already converted into a smart object we will have different options clicking on that play icon we will be able to add motion effects only but we won't be able to control the speed so what can we do in this case what if I want to still change the speed of this video we can still double click on the smart objects icon in the layers panel and then we will be able to access the embedded video inside the smart object so here I can still go and change the speed of this video or do other edits to it inside the smart object so that's also a very useful way of working with video it's a bit similar uh, in After Effects where you can separate elements of your editing so now that we have these three clips ready I also added some effects I'm increasing the speed of this last one we can create transitions between them to add transitions you can click on this icon here and you can choose from one of these options here and you can also set the duration of the effect so if I want to add let's say a crossfade between these uh, videos I can just drag crossfade between them and let me just zoom a little bit closer with this slider here at the bottom because I want to make sure I edit the effect properly so crossfade drag and drop and move it over the videos there so let's have a look at it now I'm going to play the video and there's a nice crossfade between them too 
If I want to change the effect, I can always right click on it here first and we can get rid of the crossfade or we can also add another one and maybe I'm going to add a fade with white onto these and do the same thing here. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to check this one here, fade with white and we can see the fast version of this video and then we can also check this fade here which goes to white and then goes back to the other video. If you want to change the length of the transitions, you can always drag them around. So you can very easily and precisely set the duration of the effects. And once again, if you want to switch them to another type of effect, just right click on them and then you can choose from the list another effect. And you can even change the duration here or you can delete them easily. The way you can add an audio is also very easy. There's an audio track automatically in the timeline and you just need to click on this icon here and choose add audio. Once I choose that, I can find a, a audio file, click on open and then it will be added to my timeline. Obviously this is much longer than the videos that I have, so I can always trim the audio. And the same thing you can do with videos as well. Click on the end point and trim a clip and that will make the whole clip much shorter, but it doesn't delete anything, so I can always go back and get all those parts that I trimmed. So let me just set it back to this original size. And there's another thing that you can use to limit the playback. Uh, using these work area bars, you can drag them and then you will only be able to use the playback till the end point. So if I play, we will see that it will stop at that work area bar. I'm going to set that, that back to the end because I would like to work with all the videos. And there's one more thing I want to show you about uh, audio and that is these mute icons which will help you to mute or unmute specific parts of your video editing. So you can mute the audio easily and also clicking on the additional options, you can specify a fade in and fade out for the audio. Plus you can also control the volume. So these are quite useful. And by the way, if you don't want to hear any audio playing while you are uh, using the playback here in Photoshop, you can mute the whole audio playback as well. You also have the same option for each of these videos if you go to the audio options. So you can use the same things as with the separate audio track. You can fade in, fade out, mute and change the volume. And to switch between the audio options and the video options, you can use these icons. And last but not least, I would like to also add the title slide into this video, which I'm going to do from another document. So I'm going back to Bridge and I'm going to open this uh, title slide PSD file where I have the title and this background. So I'm going to select these two together and I am going to copy them onto the other document by going to Window Arrange, Tile Up Vertical. I can see the two documents together and then from here I can just simply drag and drop it into the other document like that. Now we can close the title slide and as you can see once we place a new layers into our document with the timeline it will automatically create video tracks for these uh, layers as well. So now we can move these here in the front. Actually, I have the audio selected as well. So I only want the title and this background selected. I can move them in the front and we can even put them in the same video group. But in this case, I would like to keep them separate and I am going to move the videos. So these three clips behind them. So I'm going to move them a little bit forward in time and also extend the audio a bit. So now if we zoom a little bit closer, we can see what's happening here. So that looks good, but I am going to just trim this video a little bit in the front like that. And we can also add the facts. We can use a um, crossfade or once again, fade with white um, to make sure that these fade out and the video will fade in with white as well. So let's have a look at the whole video now. 
I'm not going to play everything, but I'm just going to start the play. Um, I'm always using this play head. So wherever you click on the timeline, you will be able to jump to that position. And you can actually use keyboard shortcuts. By pressing space, you can start the playback or click on this icon here will also start the playback for you. So let's have a look. So that was our first clip, which will now transition into the second one. And so on and so forth. So this is how you do the editing. I'm going to stop it now. And it's also good to know that whenever you have a lot of clips, and especially if you start using effects and uh, filters, your video playback might be a bit slower than the original playback. And this little green line here shows those frames that are already loaded into the RAM. So they will be able to play back next time with their normal frame rate, which is visible here at the bottom, 29.97 frames per second. And until it loads in, it will always be a little bit slower. It's called frame skipping. It won't render as nicely. So it will be a little bit skipping frames. So it won't be that smooth, the playback. And in some cases like here, it's much faster to load in. That's just another thing it's good to know about. And by the way, here on the top, we can see how long our video is. It's around one minute long. But if you want to see the amount of frames, you can switch to time code display. If you alt click on the time here at the bottom on the status bar, you can change it to time code. And the same way you can change it back by alt clicking on it again to see once more the seconds. I'm going to talk about exporting your videos in another tutorial as well, but let me just show you how to do that quickly so you can try it out. With this icon here at the bottom, you can render the video and then you can set up all these options here. First of all, what format you would like to render to and then would you like to render the whole video or only a specific area of your video. As I said, I will come back to this topic and also we will learn much more about video editing in other tutorials coming up. So if you are interested about more that you can do in Photoshop with videos, make sure you check out my other tutorials in this series. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.